Hello coders, today I'm going to be teaching you guys another animation for your buttons that you can add to your button branching system. This is going to be the button brancher animation that we're going to be working with today. So we have the buttons branching out in a linear uh, fashion, but they're fading in instead of sliding in like this that we talked about in the previous tutorial. So instead of sliding, we're going to be fading. Let's go ahead and look at the code to see how we can pull this off. Okay, so here we are back in our button brancher script. Now, if you haven't seen the previous tutorial, you're going to want to check that out because I already talked about all of this code right here. Okay, so in this uh, in this tutorial, I'm going to be telling you guys what all of this stuff means right here. Notice that we have a button branch or button fader type that I'm using, and this is because I created a script called Button Fader, and we're going to need to uh, be doing some work with that. Basically, the button fader is responsible for fading the buttons into the screen. I decided to create another script for that just so it would make this button brancher script a little bit less convoluted. So let's go ahead and look at the button fader uh, class to see what mm, its contents contain. All right. So I'm going to talk about first these uh, these initial variables that I set. Faded is going to be what determines if we can start fading the new the next button in to the screen. Then I have a button image and a text, which is going to uh, be able to determine and change the color of our button image and our text color. All right. And then we have the button color and the text color, which is going to be um, reference to those colors right there. And then we have a start fade uh, boolean, which is going to determine whether we can be updating the uh, colors in the update event function down here. Then I have a smooth, which is going to determine how fast the buttons can fade in. And then finally, as a safety precaution, I created a Boolean for initialized, which is going to make sure that we have the correct values initialized that we need to be able to actually fade the buttons into the screen. Now for starters, we have the start event function where, where I first call initialize. And inside the initialize method, as you can see here, we have a start fade, or we set the start fade and the faded Boolean to uh, false. And then I get the component of the image and set that equal to button image. And then I set button color. And then what I do is I check to see if we have a text component. The reason is because not all buttons have text components. So if we do, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to get the component. Um, we're going to get the text component if we have it, set it equal to text. And then we'll be able to set our text color. Finally, we set initialize to true because if this is if this has all happened then we know that we have initialized. Now come down to update. First thing I do is check to see if we have started fading. And if we have, I know that I can um, start fading the button in. So what I do is I say fade and I pass smooth as a variable. Smooth is going to be set from the button brancher class. And then what I do is I say if button color dot a, so if the alpha value of the color is greater than 0 0.9, I'm going to say faded equals true. All right. Now note that dot a, the max value is going to be one. So what I'm doing is I'm just saying if it's greater than 0 0.9 because that's close enough uh, for me at least to start fading in the next button. Remember, whenever we set faded to true, that's going to tell our button brancher that we can start fading in the next button. All right. And so let's look at this fade, which we call right here. Let's look at that fade method. What is it doing? First, I check to see have we initialized. If we have, or if we haven't, I'm going to make sure we do. And then I set smooth equal to rate. Note that rate is a parameter passed to fade. This is where we set it from the button brancher script. And then I say start fade equal true because we have started fading. And now the next thing I need to do is increase the alpha component of the colors, both the button color and the text color. So what I do is I say button color dot a plus equals rate, which is the speed at which the button color uh, fades in. And then I say button image dot color equals button color. All right. So I have to make sure I say button image dot color because button image is the actual component attached to our button. Okay, if I just say button color dot a, that's not actually going to do anything to our button. Then what I do is I make sure again to see if we have a text component, and if we do, then I can do the exact same thing with the text color. All right, so that's going to cover our button fader script. Let's come back to button brancher dot cs. We're going to come back down to our reveal linearly fade method. All right, so again, we talked about all of this. Now let's look at this block of code specifically. What I do is I create a button fader uh, for the previous button fader, and I create a button fader for our current button fader. The reason is because I don't want the current button to start fading until the previous button fader has completely faded into the screen. 
So how do we set the previous button fader first? I check to see if i is greater than zero because if it is, that means that we're looking at a um, a button that isn't the first button in the list. Okay, so if i is greater than zero, I know that I can say uh, buttons i minus one dot get component button fader. Else, if i is not greater than zero, previous button fader equals to null. All right, because if i is equal to zero, that means it's the first button in the list which means it doesn't have any button previous to it. Then what we do is we set the, the current button fader, and all we have to do for that is say buttons at i dot get component button fader. Now once we have our previous button fader defined and our current button fader defined, we can run these conditional tests to, uh, to determine if we can start fading our button yet. The first thing I check is, do we have a previous button fader? So are we looking at something that's past the first button in the list? If we are, we say if previous button fader dot faded. So if the previous button has faded, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that my button is in the correct position. And once it's in the correct position, I'm going to start fading the button. So I'm going to say button fader dot fade, and I'm going to pass reveal settings dot fade smooth. This is where we set it from the inspector fade smooth is an extension of the real reveal settings class and we can change that value from the inspector. I'll show you guys how to do that in just a moment. Now note that I'm checking to see if I have a button fader. Okay, so this is just saying that if I'm calling this line right here and I don't have a button fader attached to my button, so if that script isn't attached to my button from the inspector, then button fader is going to be set to null. Okay, so what I'm saying is, if button fader is not equal to null, then we can then we can fade. Else, if we don't have a button fader, I want to log this error just for my convenience. It's basically just a reminder that says, hey, you're trying to fade a button into the screen that doesn't have a button fader script attached to it. So go ahead and attach that script to it. All right. Okay, so what we just did was we checked to see if we have a previous button fader. So if we don't, so else, else, so here we're saying if this is the first button in our list then what we're gonna do is essentially the same thing we're just gonna make sure that our button is in the correct position and if it is then we're gonna say um, if button fader so if this button has a button fader to it then we can fade else we're gonna log this error that says you need to attach a button fader to this button okay so the only difference between these two conditionals is I'm not checking for the previous button faded All right. And that's going to finish this method, this animation method. So if we zoom out here, go back to Unity, um, the, method, the, the behavior you should expect to see after completing that method is this right here where the buttons are fading in at their positions. All right. So I said that I was going to tell you guys about the, um, how you can change the fade speed from the inspector. So if you click on any of your button branches and then go to the inspector, jump into the script component you'll see that in the reveal settings right here in the reveal settings you have this fade smooth and right now it's at 0 0.03 I thought that was a nice speed um, to have it at we can change this to something like one and you'll see here that they fade in really quickly it's almost hard to tell that they're even fading at all alright so if I change this to something really slow like 0 0.001 I can click it again and you'll see that they're fading in really slow and note that the next button won't start fading until this red button is completely faded in and there it goes right there and so that's what the button fader script is uh, responsible for doing it's responsible for telling us if the current button has started fading or is faded yet All right. and that's going to conclude this tutorial where I taught you how to do another animation um, in the next tutorial we're going to cover the circular button animations so look forward to that tutorial. But as always, drop a like for us if you like this video. If you haven't subscribed to our channel channel yet and you're liking these videos, go ahead and subscribe. We have a lot of more a lot more great stuff coming out in the future. But as always, this has been a Renaissance Coders tutorial. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next tutorial.